for those of you uh, uh, who uh, haven't read, Raj Darbari is a classic uh, work of Indian political economy. Actually, I mean, it's a, it's a work of fiction. Uh, uh, it, it, it's a novel called Raj Darbari. R A G R A G Raj Darbari by Sri Lal Shukla. Uh, available in English translation. So, I mean, it, it, the original describes uh, the sorts of uh, processes, right? I mean, very, very similar uh, processes, I mean, elite capture of uh, what uh, start off as uh, community intervention. So, uh, very interesting. I uh, really uh, look forward to it. And I guess I completely uh, agree with you in terms of uh, actually dirtying uh, one's hand. Uh, mm -hmm. Before my uh, academic uh, career, I uh, spent several years uh, building uh, micro and pico hydro plants uh, in, in around the same region. I was in North Kerala, uh, okay. Kannur. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard work. It's, 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 yeah, and, uh, great. Uh, I can't agree with you more. I mean, I uh, <laughs> stopped working. I stopped working with uh, IIT and I am a uh, student. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, but they, you know, um, if you give them a chance, you know, we have started a uh, course called TBS, Technology Development Supervised Learning. Um, IIT has a lot of flexibility. So this is a six-credit course where they don't have to do a classroom, any classroom, but at least. Four, four to six weekends they have to be in between. And there should be, uh, every two weeks you should have a kind of two hour contact session with your guide. And then you, at the end you come out with a report. And I think, you know, uh, and it's all for undergrad. Even nine, at one point, 90 students kind of registered for that. And it is something, you know, like they, they go there and, you know, they, they, they feel the whole thing. And so, one, and many of them actually came back for MTech college. So the point is, um, are we giving them enough window to kind yeah. of experience this is the question. Okay, I'm trying to formulate a question, but I feel overwhelmed with information. Uh, it's just churning around still in my head. Um, but it seems to me that the themes running through this is this trying to hold the state to account, which seems to be utterly failing across everything. And in a way, PPPs in, in that structure is another, it's just like shifting the edges, really. It's, just, it's no less public or private than it was before. It's still the same power groups, just shifting around a little bit. I think it's deepened also. Much more, it's much more deepened also because you know I think um, the uh, pre 90s state was much more uh, you know kind of stronger I think could take okay. its decisions could take its decisions at least you know one of my students is actually looking at it, one public utility across the spectrum you know from 1940 to, to present and uh, the the colonial one was kind of you know. Um, it was super efficient, like financial calculations of a project, you know, only when, when it is prudent that you go into a, into a project and things like that. But then the equity, um, you know, distribution, all this suffered during that time. And then came the kind of welfare, welfare you know, where this all became kind of, you know, supply side mm -hmm. interventions and, you know. But even then, the, I think state was very strong. But the liberalized one, completely no accountability, and the, and the shift happening is actually when big finance is coming, the decisions are not taken outside. Is this the, the, private a, capital coming? Yeah, in? it's basically an SPV takes a decision, right. a special purpose vehicle, mm -hmm. which is actually out of this. You know, what they say is that they, we want to ring fence the, you know, uh, the, the finance, so it, it doesn't get used in other things. But the point is, uh, the, the the same thing what state is supposed to do is being done parallelly. And our studies have shown that actually the consultant doesn't know anything. 
-hmm. It's actually the retired engineers, the Nehruvian engineers, yeah. you know, yeah. who actually have, who takes all the, yeah, uh, all the design and implementation with the kind of a, a retired bureaucracy up to the level of supervisors and you know. so. You say our studies have shown the consultant. Yeah, I so can send you. Written up. Yes, can you? This is what needs to be. What alternatives have rejected it? <laughs> <laughs> close friend, but well, and close friend, but he was very much against this argument that we were telling. Peter, so yeah. the, uh, no, one thing I sort of slightly disagree with, and most of the things which you said in response to Kate's uh, question, I do agree, but I do see a very clear transition also with the reforms in the political structures outside, and I, I do see at every level, talk at the center of state or local, Structures are trying to realign themselves with the with the regime shifts. They are trying to retain their old patterns of uh, re uh, patterns of creating power structures and reasoning. And they are trying to definitely align it. So, do really reforms are trying to depoliticize? I do suspect. I, my observations definitely say that they are repoliticizing it in a different way. Yeah. Yes. I didn't say depoliticization. Uh, okay. yeah. And, and, and the depoliticization is happening in a way where they can find their spaces in the politics, even in the reforms. You know, so, so that is. What's yeah. the role of the bureaucracy? You know, bureaucracy is now um, completely aligning with this whole process you know, because they are getting part of the kind of whatever the benefits are. You know, you know. Um, but the point is that you know. It's hollowing out also because of that. Because right. there's no need for a big bureaucracy now, because the because of the consultancy. You know, PwC will do the work for you. <laughs> so you know. So this uh, the most important thing is that the accounting wing is very big. For example, this public water utility for the last two times they have a Indian audit and account service person as the managing director because the most biggest thing that you have to do is accounting. Mm -hmm. And the engineers are minor players in this whole game. So that's the financialization that's happening also. So over a period of time, I think, you know, engineers may not be much needed. You know. And it's a kind of global imagination that's working. You need, you need global imagination, you know. Yeah, what, what is the drinking water scheme that you need? What is the sugar treatment plan that you need? It should be like, it should look like Tokyo or London. That's the imagination that's coming up, you know. Because the, we have we have signed the, uh, uh, the the TRIPS agreement also on services. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So then you, you have to give the level playing ground to all that. So it should be all global contracts. And so it's, a, and, and the context doesn't allow that. Because there's no planned roads. It's exactly the, the same in the UK. We had the, all these engineers making decisions about water, and obviously that was completely wrong. We need accountants making decisions about water. The model we exporting. No, I just want to ask. Like, this is my confusion also. It's like the whole narrative of liberalisation is like straight Austrian, then straight we can weak and sort of stuff. But I was just wondering, like, doesn't state have its own choice? It does. But, but what is the what is the state in your mind? Who is it? The yeah, like, because Adam Smith won wanted self interest because he thought he put enlightened before that. So if you're talking about the bureaucrat, you have the enlightened before that, you know. <laughs> the the Nairobian, the you know, the Ambedkarian, you know. But that that is gone. I don't know whether it was ever there. No, but you know, there are a couple of examples which are very different and especially of the states which are which have gained a lot of fame for neoliberal development model, for example Gujarat in India. No PPP in Gujarat is working. In fact what is happening is most of the water infrastructure, drinking water infrastructure is based on the Sardar Sarovar Dram and has created a centralized grid across the state connecting most of the cities and towns and villages and a, a different and the entire, uh, entire centralized grid is serving as, uh, at a level where the politics is reorganizing the state in a different way. In a different way. 
So, state, you asked a question to, uh, to Suhas that what is the state in your mind? And I suddenly remembered this. And now Telangana is copying the same model. Maharashtra is trying to copy the same model in different form. Then they can create centralized grids because centralized grids allow centralization of power. Centralization of power allows the current practices of political parties of decision making. And it can, it can really serve as an instrument to reorganize the entire politics. So, yeah, my question was that basically, character of the state, Gujarat, the two, the, 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 this answer isn't there, you know, yes. question, you know. Gujarat and Andhra is so autocratic, yeah. two states. But you know, and what, what is the externality, environmental externality? I'm still, uh, still wondering, you know, we have answered well enough. In a state which belongs to the God, God's own country, green state, right? uh, high literacy, right? <coughs> why the local, urban local bodies are failing to take uh, the, 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 the sub canals as well? That, the urban local bodies are such strong community. I mean, I'm talking about Kerala, a particular state in context. Right? What about the entire country then? I mean, it's a yeah. situation. You know, the, uh, that's why I told you the non lucrative sector. If I am a mayor, you know, I have highly lucrative sectors to look after. And mm -hmm. so there is there is nothing to come out from this. Because I say, as does he have much, much other things to do? Other things to do. So he came and, you know, kind of personally, you know, went to each house. The MLA will give a sticker if there is a biogas plant. There is an MLA sticker that this house has a. So he is, you know, but the normal mayor wants lucrative road contracts, you know, electricity. He has made everything LED, you know. So the available resource will be spent on those things. I think, in a way, Suhas is excellent um, analysis of that WAA, WBA. It's like a microcosm of what's happening at the national level. It's like these mm. different incentives and power relationships being played out in different ways, but often with unexpected consequences. Who would have thought that low-cost farm and women would be the beneficiaries of um, mm. all kinds of incentives and, and power relations going on? So it's a way forward, then, your approach of sort of going for new structures rather than trying to get your, your old institutions to change. Uh, 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 sorry if I gave that message. I thought, you know, these new structures are for upward accountability to creation also. Along with that, social regulation. I think they have to play these four roles. <coughs> right, yeah. This lateral and vertical. Because otherwise I told you, you know, it will be, it will be too romantic, uh, small is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you are, your structure has the buy-in from below. That's the important bit, otherwise... First it has to have buy-in from below. Because otherwise it's not sustainable, yeah, which is what we found in Rajasthan as well. Okay. It's like it has to be owned by the local population and then you need to get the buy-in from above. First the buy-in from below, then the buy-in from below. Yeah. And this is what I think also is true for the Washington Association. Because the case that Suhas actually presented, where he actually kind of deconstructed the success. That is supposedly the model water user association, not just in Maharashtra, but also one of the models in the entire country. And there have been examples after examples where water users association as a new form of institution from a centralized form, centralized form, form that has failed. Thousands of water users associations being formed overnight, either because of a legislation or because the, of a very proactive bureaucracy. Or that's let's say top the down. Of that's top down. That's why and it doesn't that is work. Right? That, that's why it doesn't work. But if the legislation says you have to form X, Y, or Z, they meet once, bus again. Yeah. And that has happened. That yeah. is, and you can see even in the so-called success cases also raise certain kind of questions. Yeah, this no. is one of the best, the best, and yes. Yeah. Yeah. And with my education hat, what I'd actually say is that part of what's missing here is that this doesn't link into what we're teaching our children. 
And ultimately speaking, it's all very well to have all great ideas, but, but if you don't bring this consciousness into the primary schools, where people start, where children start to understand how all of this fits together, when they grow up, they, you know, you have to do a lot less work to get them to buy into anything. And I think that's where, that's where some of these things are missing. That's why I told 20 years. <laughs> but it needs to be included into the school curriculum. It needs to go into the primary school. It needs to take the primary school. Kids need to go and see practically how this and this is not the school structures we have nowadays. Not only here, but in other countries are not. Well, but that's set not the case because in the UK, at the level of primary school, mm -hmm. they have started working mm -hmm. with Good. The children but on all these issues. Yeah. 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 I think even in Bangalore also they have this organization which is working with the students. So they have asked students to uh, what keep grade, record. What grade? Uh, it's like first standard, second standard. Okay. Primary. Primary, yeah, because so uh, not everyone goes to secondary. We need to teach. To keep a record of the grades in our Yeah. Our brains are all the pride. Towns and even some of the villages in this country where the small, it's just like you are small scale independent providers who are taking water from the ground and selling a 20 liter water jar. Yeah. And this is another kind of privatization is of keeping in and just seeping and spreading rapidly. Yes. If I, we can locate them in one of the villages of the Maharashtra, forget about the small person city. So this is the entire debate of the PPP and privatization. So where we are locating these players who are spreading everywhere and purely operating on the basis of the market. Mm -hmm. So where the equity is seen and where this look this so then the question is where we are opposing about the privatization, but but in this case there nobody there, there is no one to oppose it means and we are not even considering them. We are not even them, them bringing on the table. And they're spreading and nobody's paying attention. Okay. So where we are where we are locating that chunk and that operations in this entire debate of PPP. Mm -hmm. Just to add we didn't talk about this in this is like that's why I'm just tagging it. I think there is, as far as the water sector is concerned, uh, who is actually a private? Because uh, unfortunately, uh, in India, water is largely driven by atomistic, what our friend Tushar says, atomistic users. India's water sector is not governed by centralized centralized institutions because large part of water use actually takes place beyond surface water, it is really like groundwater and it is largely unregulated. So one has to actually rethink of what is public and what is private. So when we say 